Welcome everybody, I am the Quad Professor. Today we're going to talk about value. $900 12-inch sub, $70 12-inch sub. Which one's a better deal? In the corner on the left, we have a stuff weighing in at 7.8 pounds soaking wet. In the right corner, we have a stuff weighing in at just under 95 pounds. Folks, who set this fight up? It has the makings of a bloodbath. So really, in fairness, I recognize I've brought a dull knife to a cannon fight. Um, this is dual voice coil, single voice coil, although that doesn't really matter in the comparison, wouldn't change very much. This has a um, eight layer voice coil, four layer voice coil. Again, big difference, but in this comparison, that's not the deal breaker on it. It has more to do with the motor. I mean, just the motor difference is crazy. Um, the spider, the spider on the, the sundown is, is just stiff, beautiful. I mean, it's, you, you gotta see it in person. It's really nice. The tinsel leads are really high quality. The connectors are really high quality. They'll accept a super large gauge. It's well underrated for what it is. You can tell by the surround, Ooh, the casting, I mean, this is just burly as all get out. This is stamped, a fairly flimsy, albeit stiff um, spider. The whole motor area is just underwhelming. So I recognize it's not a fair comparison, but still value isn't in those things. It's in, is the money you're spending worth what you get for it. That's what value is. That's what we're talking about. All right, so let's take a look at some of the differences in the two speakers. Now, some of it's obvious, but some of it is very subtle. So let's take a look at the tinsel leads. The tinsel leads on the Sundown are very high quality. They're flat. They have some give to them. So there's Lots of room for movement without them touching or short circuiting. And because it's dual voice coil, obviously they're on both sides. They're pretty well secured to the spider. They're just really, really nice. Very high quality. On the boss, it's your standard, which you would expect to see from basically any speaker. So very small tinsel leads, which tells you the power rating, really. They are secured in one location, but they still could, in theory, short out, although you're probably not going to push them hard enough to ever get to that point. All right, so let's take a closer look at the spider differences. The spider on the boss is very typical. It's got that Kevlar yellow. Um, it's it flexes really easy, so I wouldn't call it stiff, but it, it doesn't feel like it has a lot of give to it, if it can be both. The Sundown is extremely firm, but it does have give to it. It's got a nice coating on it. It's very heavy duty. You can tell just comparing those two things. One of them's made for heavy power. One of them isn't. Now let's take a closer look at the cones. And the surrounds, the surround on the Sundown is very, very heavy duty. Um, you trade off some efficiency for that. You can see on the boss, the cone and the surround is very, very thin. And that's in an attempt to make it more efficient for the same power. The Sundown is actually quite stiff. And the surround is probably most of the moving mass. 
So the trade-off that you're making is a little bit of efficiency, but you can put considerably more power to it without any distortion. The cones, they're both very light. On the right side with the sundown, it's a very exotic material, but still very light, very stiff. It's nice. Also, the surround is stitched to it, so you're not relying on only glue. You actually have a mechanical fastener holding the two together. On the boss, it's a poly, um, which is just plastic cone. It's very thin, which makes it light and somewhat efficient, but it's very flexible. So you add that to that soft surround, it would be really easy to get a nonlinear motion with this. Now the connectors are just push on spade style, nothing too nice or fancy, just your basic. And with the sundown, it has just giant spring loaded. There's not a lot of play to them. They're very firm, very nice. It'll take some real serious wire. So a nice heavy gauge, high power. All right, so onto the motor portion. First, let's take a look at the magnets. Hmm. <laughs> Pretty obvious difference there. You can see the sundown is actually stacked magnets. The boss um, is one magnet. Um, besides that, the size is a huge difference visually. If you look at the mass of the magnets, again, pretty big difference. Um, and that's reflected in the frame material also. So one's really heavy duty, one's not. The boss is a stamped steel, pretty thin, pretty flimsy. The sundown is a cast aluminum. It is extremely heavy duty. You can put some real power to this, and I can guarantee the frame's not going to be what gives up on you. It's just, it's a true competition sub. You can, you can put some real power to it. There are people who are reportedly using SALT 4 or SALT 6 for one of these subwoofers. All right, final thoughts. So even if you can't afford what is arguably one of the biggest, baddest speakers on the planet in the Z-Series Sundown version 6, there's still a lot of other options in between this version and something like this from Boss. Um, this is really an entry level, and, and I'm not knocking the speaker. I'm not knocking the people that buy it. The reason I even compared this one is because it had a lot of reviews on a lot of sites. Um, it's mixed. People have high expectations. I mean, it's $70 normally. I would have high expectations too, most likely. But really, instead of having two of these, um, let's call them not great speakers, you could get one really good speaker, either from Scar Audio. They've got a lot of entry-level subs that don't require a lot of power. You can buy a standard off-the-shelf box, nothing crazy, um, and they sound great. They seem to be holding up pretty good. They have a good response. I mean, you're, you're trading some things off for cost. It's not just the build quality, which we've seen. You're trading off response level. You're trading off clarity. You're trading off the reasons that you even have a subwoofer. So in something like this, two of these are gonna give you muddy response. Um, they're not gonna be able to handle anywhere close to the power that they're rated for. So that might be disappointing. And if you have a good amp on it and you destroy the speaker, you can take your amp with it. So that's a pretty high risk. You're better off having one good speaker. You can get a really inexpensive, super powerful amp in the down for sound version, the JP8. So that's what I actually have in my daily driver. I'm running two tens off of it and they are Alpine type R tens. They sound fantastic. Now that they've actually broken in, they sound just amazing for your daily driver for Phil or even as an entry level. That's a really good option. One good speaker, two good speakers, always better than multiple, let's say not great speakers. I don't want to say bad. A lot of people buy them. It has its place in this world. Um, it's just that place isn't in my car. And it shouldn't be in yours. You should 
You should want more. You should want more bass. I'm the quad professor, and I'm out.